Hello, I'm Ken Owen. And I'm Michael Haddam. Welcome to History Talks. Now, let's get back to the past. Today, we're going to talk about the Gadsden flag and why it doesn't mean exactly what you think it means. This 18th century flag has become a common symbol at present day protests. You saw it used by Tea Party activists protesting the 2008 bank bailouts and the Affordable Care Act. More recently, you've seen corporations use it in their advertising campaigns. And most recently of all, protesters carried copies of the Gadsden flag with them as they invaded the Capitol building in Washington DC and stormed Congress on January the 6th. The Gadsden flag is named after its supposed creator, Christopher Gadsden, seen here in his later years. He was a member of the South Carolina Sons of Liberty and the first two Continental Congresses, and he created the flag for the Continental Navy in late 1775. The Gadsden flag has two elements, the rattlesnake and the phrase, don't tread on me. Let's start with the snake. This was a direct callback to the famous join or die image produced by Benjamin Franklin back in 1754. As the French and Indian War approached, representatives from a number of colonies met to discuss a potential plan of union in case of war and French invasion. Franklin's cartoon was an attempt to rally popular support between colonies and colonists. And it was used later by Franklin and other newspaper editors in the 1760s and 1770s as a means of calling for colonial unity in resisting British imperial reforms. Rattlesnakes were identified with North America and known to only attack in self-defense, and that's how many colonists understood their resistance to Britain and their move toward independence. But unlike Franklin's snake, Gadsden's snake is in one piece. It's united. He's sending the message that the colonies and colonists were united with one another in opposition to Britain, and they were coiled ready to strike. The second element is the phrase, don't tread on me. This phrase is seen as expressing individualism, as well as anti-government sentiments, especially among those who understand the revolution as being about securing individual freedoms and smaller government. This notion of rugged individualism that goes along with thinking about individual rights is more a product of the 19th century and the mythos of the Wild West. Many colonists in the 18th century believed that to be virtuous meant to put the public good over your own self-interest. It's important to point out that how we remember and think about the revolution has changed over time. People in the 18th century thought about it very differently than people who grew up during the Cold War era. During the Cold War, one of the ways many Americans identified themselves and their country as distinct from that of Soviet communism was by defining the revolution as having been about individual rights and limited government because they contrasted with the Soviet Union's collectivism and its large centralized government. So for many people who grew up learning that the American Revolution was about individualism and smaller government, the Gadsden flag also represents individualism and smaller government, and not unity between the colonies, even though those were not its original meanings. So we can see with the Gadsden flag how certain ways of understanding and interpreting the revolution affect how we understand symbols from the era. We can also see how they can be employed to persuade specific audiences of ideas and even actions very different from what they may have originally represented. The past is a complex place indeed. For History Talks, I'm Ken Owen. And I'm Michael Haddam. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching.